Welcome to Mary's Library and Book Spot. Tom Winter and I present this special program today for Veterans Day, November 11th. We honor all who have served our country in war and peace. Our book for today is A War Not One by Ernest D. Prosciutto, Lieutenant General, United States Army, retired. That's right, our own Ernie Prosciutto, a longtime parishioner at St. Mary's. This book, A War Not Won, is his personal account of when he was in command of the 86th Combat Engineer Battalion from August 1968 to July 1969, one year during the Vietnam War. During that unpopular and undeclared war, Ernie tells us in the introduction, nearly 2,700,000 Americans served their country. More than 58,000 died, and more than 300,000 were wounded. Ernie wrote this book, A War Not Won, as a tribute to the men he served with in the Army Combat Engineers 86th Battalion. They faced constant danger from enemy attack while they were doing their job as they cleared jungles and they built roads and bridges through dangerous Viet Cong territory. They built airfields and fire support bases. They cleared mines and booby traps. And they lived through nightly enemy attacks only to push further the next day into Viet Cong territory. Ernie says they were combat engineers in the finest tradition of army engineers. They did their job and they did not complain. And their country's reward for their sacrifice was an honorable discharge and an occasional bronze star. They may not have been the kind of heroes we read about, he writes, but they were the stuff of which heroes are made. Ernie could not be here today to talk about his book because he lives at Sand Hill Cove, and he and Libby are under lockdown because of the coronavirus. Ernie assured me that he and Libby are just fine, and we take this opportunity to send them our love and our thanks for their many years of service. Libby was on the altar guild for years, and Ernie was our longtime treasurer during the building of the Pittenger Center and the Youth Building. Since Ernie couldn't be here today, I told him I had asked Jack Norris to come and read something directly from the book, and Ernie was delighted. I add here that Jack and Kay Norris are in the vanguard of longtime dedicated parishioners that we've been so blessed to have here at St. Mary's. So here is Jack Norris reading from Ernie's book about the chaplain who was part of the 86th Battalion, Chaplain Mills. Soldiers in combat must have access to spiritual leaders. Because that old story that soldiers turn to God in combat is not a myth. Chaplain Harold Mills was a Baptist and I am an Episcopalian, both devout Christians. Together we attended and grieved at too many grief-stricken memorial services to honor our fallen engineers. He was a spiritual leader for me and for the men. He brought God's word and comfort to the men when he visited, visited with them in the field and when he offered individual counseling. He traveled with me often to visit our men in far-flung units and to conduct non-denominational services for them. He used the hood of a jeep, the side of a crane, or whatever else was convenient to set up an altar on which he placed a cross. 
Men gathered around him for prayers, Bible readings, singing, and communion. On a few rare occasions, a Roman Catholic chaplain served our men. There were no Jewish chaplains available. Chaplains are an essential part of our army. Some politically correct citizens have tried to do away with chaplains in the military. That would be a terrible step to undermine the strength of the American soldier. Chaplain Mills had no trouble convincing me that we needed a chapel at Camp Viking. It was a sanctuary for all of us. The chapel was a a physical symbol of our faith. We held a special service to dedicate this battalion's chapel. Chaplain Mills and Chaplain Norris L. Einerston, the group chaplain, led the service. Volunteers built the chapel with a wood floor and a frame for the chapel tent. They made a crude altar table to hold a cross. He borrowed folding chairs from the mess hall each Sunday for services. Many of our men at Camp Viking attended chapel on Sundays. Chaplain Mills used the tent during the week to meet with men who needed counseling. Thank you, Jack. From Ernie's book, we learn that on Thanksgiving Day, there was chapel and turkey dinner delivered somehow, but it also came with a typhoon. And as Ernie says, another sea of mud. The bitter cold weather did improve for Christmas, and there was a visit from Bob Hope and a bevy of beauties. Then, late that night, Christmas night, another enemy attack and more casualties. In January, mail arrived from home, but it brought disturbing newspaper accounts that the war was almost over and that there was no action occurring in the Mekong Delta in South Vietnam. The news was disheartening because, as Ernie writes, Our battalion had suffered more casualties that December than in any previous month. Most tragic are the thousands of men who paid with their lives during the Vietnam War. Their names are etched into the black granite of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington. Over 58,000 names, and of those names, over 150 are from the 86th Battalion. On Veterans Day, November 11th, we pay tribute to them all, and we also honor and thank all living veterans. Thank you, Ernie, for your book. And thank you for all your years of service to our country. God bless all of our veterans, and God bless America.